welcome back to another episode of The Whiskey Diaries. My name is Martin Lang and we're here at Death and Taxes and today we're going to be talking about Nika, specifically the Yoshi single release of the Apple Brandy Wood Finishes commemorating the 100 years anniversary for the wedding between Masataka Takatsuru and Rita. Now, we're going to go a little bit of history on this whiskey first and then we're going to go all about this whiskey and why this is so important and why this is actually a very collectible item as well. Now, Masataka Takesuru opened the distillery in 1936 uh, after doing a massive apprenticeship in Scotland, specifically in Campbelltown, uh, Hazelburn, and also he did a, before Hazelburn, he was in Long, uh, Longmorn. Now, he learned everything about Scott uh, over there, and he loved Scotland very, very much. He wanted to stay there. Uh, eventually, he married. He met a, a young lady called Rita, and they got married. And eventually, they moved to Japan to start whiskey. Now, Rita was a massive part of this. Like she was the one who convinced him that they needed to go back to Japan uh, because he could change the industry over there, which eventually he did. In 1921, he was working under the current uh, Yamasaki Distillery, and eventually he moved on to start his own distillery in Yoichi. Uh, Yoishi is a town in Hokkaido that is basically on the on the west coast, very close to the ocean. And what they do, uh, when, the reason why they moved over there is because it was the most resemblance to uh, Glasgow that there was. They were close to the ocean, it was very humid, it was very green. Uh, there's a lot of theories out there that says that they moved there just to uh, emulate the weather and the style of, Japan, of Scotland whiskey. But it was more for Rita uh, to find a location that reminds her more about Glasgow. So it was more a romantic choice than actual practical rose. Uh, there's a little bit more history about that, like in the 1900s distillery in itself, they weren't close to the ocean or they weren't hidden in the mountains because of uh, illegal distilling. In the other hand, they were actually uh, producing and creating these distilleries in closer to towns and uh, quick access to railroads and so on. So Yoshi was not a practical choice. Anyway, regardless of that, uh, they started the Yoshi distillery and in the beginning, because they couldn't, produce, they couldn't sell the whiskey st straight away because they wanted to age it, for the first few years, for the first five, six years, they were producing apple brandy and, um, and cider uh, because around the Yoshi precinct, uh, there was lots of apples uh, and they, they grow basically everywhere. So they were producing apple brandy and, and apple cider. And then giving apple juice, as a, as a matter of fact, as well. So in the first uh, Yoshi whiskey that ever got released was in the 1940s. Um, and then after that, obviously, you know, Nika, they started producing, they got to Miyayiku and then so on and so on. So the release of this particular whiskey is basically a, a nod to Rita and the influence that he, she had on Masataka Taketsuru to create the distillery and to create a whiskey that is so, so incredibly good uh, to this day. So this particular one uh, is a 47% ABV whiskey. Uh, it's aged in apple brandy wood finish. So basically they age it in American oak uh, for a certain period of time and then they do a finish on the apple brandy. Now this one is a non-age non statement. We're going to go through that in different videos in which we're going to talk about the Yoshi and the Miyayiku knowledge statement. And we're going to explain why Nika went to a uh, knowledge statement. But basically it's the fact that they ran out of stock uh, in the, 19, in the 2000, around 2015 because a very popular show that described the relationship between Taketsuru and Rita. And the show was so incredibly popular that the distillery in itself just ran out of aged whiskey. Nowadays, if you can find a Nika 12 or a Nika 15, you get your hands around it, but it'll be really, really highly expensive. We, have a, we will have a review on the Nika uh, Yoshi 15 years old, uh, and you'll see why. Uh, so yeah, back to it. Uh, this was bottled in 2020, uh, commemoration of the 100 years anniversary of the wedding, uh, and it's uh, they're not they're not going to do another release of this whiskey for a while. So this whiskey originally was a $340 when it first got released, and that was a month ago. Uh, now this whiskey goes online for everything over $800, $900. I expect that in a couple of years this whiskey will sell for $2,000 or so on. Uh, highly collectible, so if you can get your hands around right now, I will definitely, definitely get it. So I have tried this whiskey before, and uh, it's actually very fruity, uh, but it's kind of like... Uh, it's kinda like um, 
it's fruity but at the same time has a little bit of smoke. Yoishi in itself, the distillery, uh, they do add smoke to the whiskey. They have pitted uh, malted barley. Uh, so it does have a little bit of smoke. It's kind of like having like um, a strudel, but um, yeah, it's just like a, a smoky strudel if you want to put it that way. Just have a lot of apple and fruity notes, uh, a little bit of green tea, but the smoke comes through on, on, on the nose. <clears throat> That's 47% ABV, and actually it's really, really smooth. This will be excellent as well with a little bit of water, or even a splash of soda water as well. This will be delicious as most Japanese whiskies have been created in the past to be drunk as highballs. So this represents that. It's light, it's easy drinking, and you can add a little bit of water and it will actually still stand and, and hold its flavor. Anyway, thank you very much for listening uh, and we'll see you next time. Slanjaba.